<clears throat> Greetings to all of you who have chosen to watch this video or to visit the website. My name is Nick Borden and you are probably watching this video because you are either concerned about the direction that our government has been heading for quite some time or because a friend, a relative, or some other acquaintance recommended that you watch this video. Whether or not you thank them, I suppose, depends on what you think of what I have to say. I just ask that you watch the whole video before making your decision, and possibly even a few more. Um, I am usually a little bit wordy, but uh, I will try to make this as brief as possible. Um, the political system in our country clearly has some major issues. Regardless of which side of the fence you are on, or ever were on, it would probably be difficult to disagree with this assessment. Something clearly needs to be done. We have politicians making laws and regulations, spending bills, and even tax cuts, loopholes, or refunds in such a way that they are picking winners and losers in both social and economic arenas. They are silencing some while giving others a louder voice. And it isn't just one party that's doing it. The Democrats create spending bills to favor so-called green energy, while Republicans often favor big oil. Democrats prefer to spend increasingly immense amount of money fighting poverty, using tactics that have been failing at an astounding rate. Republicans increasingly spend immense amounts of money um, on war contracts and military technology, costs more money than my entire county makes in a decade. Whose money are they spending? Not their own. They're spending ours. They take from our paychecks increasingly more and more money to fund programs that increasingly few of us ever get any real benefits from. How do we fix this? The answer, at least the spoken answer, is fairly simple. Vote them all out. But, what's the alternative? Who do we vote into office instead? After all, every election we are offered just a handful of candidates. And we are seldom all that thrilled with any of them. We pick the one that makes us the least nervous. The one who essentially promises to screw things up the least or even in some cases, the one who makes the best case about how poorly his or her opponent has already screwed up. While these are valid things to point out, what really should get a person into office isn't how much their opponent has screwed up, but what they intend to fix, or how they intend to fix, what needs fixing. What most of these politicians have never had to live the life of a common man, though. Most of them grew up in either a family whose wealth provided influence or whose influ influence has provided wealth. Too many of our politicians come from backgrounds of privilege. Well, privilege seldom produces character. I won't say it's impossible, but I will say that it is rare. So what is my solution? Us. We the people. The ordinary. People. We need to do more than vote. We need to ensure that there is always a candidate with virtues running in every election. There is always a candidate with ideas, solutions in every election. We need to ensure that we pay attention to who these candidates are, what they believe, what they want to do, what direction they want to see our nation headed in. And how do we do that? We, the people, need to run for those offices ourselves. If there isn't someone that you definitely feel like you can trust running for an election, maybe you should run yourself. Next, we need to teach our children and ourselves I actually you might do this first, but teach your children and yourselves the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. We need to know what our Founding Fathers wanted us to have, 
what they wanted to protect us from, and why they wanted it. Before today, I am willing to bet few, if any of you, who make less than six-figure incomes, have ever considered running for Congress, governors, or mayors. But I am asking some of you to now, take a long, hard, honest look at yourself, and ask yourself, can I trust myself to do the right thing? Can I trust myself to set my personal preferences, my comfort, and my pride aside to make the tough decisions of fair government? If you think your answer may be yes, then you may want to consider running for an office. But don't think for a second that the Republican or Democrat parties will support you based on your virtue, your intellect, your patriotism, or even your ideas. They won't let you get far unless you demonstrate complete and total loyalty to their party above all else. That includes sacrificing your shot at whatever office you're going for to ensure that your party wins the office, not your ideas. Politics is not an easy world, and it will likely be even harder from outside of those two main parties. But as I have discovered in my lifetime, taking the path of virtue is seldom easy. In fact, it's often the hardest road to travel. But if you would like to join me on this road, I would be happy to have you along for the journey. You see, in November of 2013, I officially launched my campaign for the office of President of the United States, along with a new political party. The party I have chosen to call the Anonymous Party for two reasons. First, since the Constitution denotes that the government of our nation should be of the people, by the people, and for the people, I think that not only should elected officials represent the people, but should be representative of the people. That means that they should not come from a select group. They should not come from prestigious families or elite organizations. They shouldn't come from wealthy backgrounds, Ivy League schools, or be members of exclusive country clubs. They should be ordinary people who have had to struggle with normal day-to-day -day issues that the rest of us face. People who are actually affected by the laws and regulations they will be deciding on whether or not to enact. People who will instinctively know how the people will be affected by their actions. The second reason I chose anonymous, anonymous for the party name is after the online movement called by the same name. Not everything done under the banner of the anonymous movement has been honorable, but the majority of it was done at least because they believed it was the right thing to do. Beliefs in personal freedoms, which extend to internet use, government transparency, and justice for all. Not just justice when it doesn't interfere with what those in power are doing. This movement often uses the Guy Fox mask, as well as the flag behind me, as its uh, two most prominent symbols. There is nothing evil about either, though I admit at least a handful of their videos may give you that impression if you watch a bunch of them. But uh, the reason for the mask is the movie V for Vendetta, and where the main character wears this mask at all times. He's never once seen without it. But um, <clears throat> it's a movie about a man with an idea who attempts to change a tyrannical British government by relieving all of its main members of their power, enabling the people of that country to establish a new government. He wears the mask as a symbol. If you have not seen the movie, I strongly recommend doing so. It is an excellent movie. Now, I also understand that it might seem a little bit crazy for an ordinary person like myself to be running for president. I mean, after all, I make less than $50,000 a year. I, I've struggled with uh, being able to afford the things that I need for my family from time to time. It's not always easy. But uh, I think it's perfectly reasonable for you, at, for you to ask, 
what makes Nick Borden a better candidate than the other options that we normally have? Why vote for Nick instead of whoever Republican or Dem whoever the Republican or Democrat parties are offering? If you have asked that question, then I applaud you in at least putting some effort into your choice for who to vote for. But I will ask more of you. Watch more of my videos. I have made about a dozen so far that outline my positions and ideas on topics such as health care reform, welfare reform. I've done two of them on the Bill of Rights and uh, several others as well. Many more videos will follow, including a video to be released um, on July the 4th, as early in the day as possible, on the Declaration of Independence. If I do not have a video on a topic that you're interested in, check out the forums um, on the Anonymous Party website, www.anonymousparty.org. Uh, many people have already asked me quite a wide variety of questions. Some have even made some suggestions, and uh, many have also offered their encouragement. But uh, perhaps I have already asked, or, uh, answered whatever question you may have to ask. If not, feel free to ask it. I try to answer as many questions as I possibly can, though some, have, some of them occasionally require a few days of thought before I actually sit down to write out a response. I, I don't like giving responses that aren't well thought out and well outlined, if I could possibly avoid it. But um, if this if this video has piqued your interest, then perhaps my original introduction video that was released on November the fifth, two thousand thirteen, might answer a few more of your questions. Though it is considerably longer than this video. But whatever you do, please make an informed decision. Always, always, always vote based on as much information as you can possibly gather. And read the Declaration of Independence. Consider actually making it a 4th of July tradition, as I have done with my family. It's not a long document, or one that is difficult to understand. There are a few terms that you may not quite catch, but uh, it's, it's really not all that hard to figure out what they mean, with nothing more than a dictionary or even just googling whatever the phrase is that you don't understand. But uh, if you're uncomfortable reading it out loud in front of people, I'm also perfectly fine with you just showing this, or not this video, but the, the video that I'm releasing on, on July the 4th, which will be posted to YouTube uh, on the Anonymous Party channel, as well as the anonymousparty.org website. Um, but know your history, know your government, and know your rights. America's greatest strength is its people. And it's about due time that our government found that out. But America can only be great when its people, its real people, are in charge. Let's take back our nation. We are the people.